What's going on guys? I just saw by the title of the video, the next franchise mode series I'm doing is the Vancouver Canucks. I actually ran a poll on both my YouTube channel and my Twitter, and you guys voted Canucks on both of them, so I figured it had to be done. Very excited to try this team out. Obviously, they haven't made a Stanley Cup final since 2011. And they now have a really solid young core with guys like Peterson, Hughes, Besser, and Horvat. So we'll see if we can use that core to help the Canucks win their first ever Stanley Cup. Also, guys, for this franchise mode series, I'm actually doing an expansion draft, but obviously not using Seattle. Custom rosters, of course, is what we're using. I spent a ton of time uh, updating my rosters. I think I uploaded that video a couple days ago. If you guys missed it, check it out. Probably on the sidebar, if not go to the channel, but I made sure to make the ratings as realistic as I could. As well, I looked at all you guys' comments on that video and made even more changes. A lot of just kind of subtle overall changes, player types, potentials, things like that. So I'm not going to name them all as there's honestly too many to name, but as I go through this franchise, you guys will probably notice a bunch of this stuff. In all honesty, a lot of it was stuff I planned on changing, but when you're making so many edits, you're going to miss some things. So franchise name there, Canucks, of course, like I mentioned, we're going to be using the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, Seattle Kraken there as well, if you guys missed it, I made as good a Seattle Kraken uh, custom team as I could. Uh, check out the Seattle vs. Buffalo video, but Vancouver Canucks here. Let's see, top players, Peterson, Besser, Hughes, already mentioned them. Arena, Rogers Arena, AHL team there. The Utica Comets, again, I think this team has a good solid young core. A7 overall there, actually ties us with Calgary and Arizona as the third best team in the Pacific. Now, Seattle should be in the Pacific, so let me just quickly swap them. They'll be swapped with the Coyotes, so... Now we're only tied there with the Flames for third best. Central, I'm curious to see kind of how the Coyotes do. Definitely be, I think, an uphill battle for them. Also, you guys are curious about the overalls. They've definitely changed with the roster update. So uh, Detroit, Ottawa, I think, are tied for the two lowest rated teams in the East. Then it's the Devils, best team by far. There you can see Tampa Bay, 92. And I think Toronto's second best at 90. In the West, the Golden Knights and the Avs and the Blues, actually, surprisingly, as well as the Stars, all tied for 89. I mean, Vegas, Colorado definitely makes sense. I'm not really sure what's weighing them down. The Dallas and St. Louis are a bit higher than I expected, but that's fine. I'm still not really sure how EA weighs the ratings in terms of overalls. So owner mode there will have turned off. Add contract year, yes, as we're basically redoing the 2020-2021 season. If you don't have that off, then the off season you're in is essentially this off season, but uh, it doesn't really make sense with player ages, contracts, things like that. Salary caps on, GM firing off, edit lines off, fog of war off, not a huge fan. Same with morale. Uh, I think it just kind of messes with things more than helps. Computer trades, of course, is on. Um, everything else there I'm going to keep off as I want to be doing it. Now in terms of the settings here, guys, of course, we're using the most realistic one. So game style there is set to 4-4 four to four full sim. Injuries lower off. They're so annoying to deal with uh, for a franchise. Period length, 20 minutes. Uh, cruiser trades on. Franchise mode length, it's at 25, but we're just going to be doing a 10 season sim. Uh, difficulty superstar, traffic ownership, authentic, salary cap on. Trade difficulty I have to set to hard. A lot of people think medium's actually more realistic, and I might even agree with them, but I kind of like the challenge of having the trade difficulty set to hard. In terms of advanced settings, I think the only change we have to make is sim engine scoring on high, as honestly high is more realistic than medium. Uh, the draft class, draft generated prospect quality, I usually keep those at medium, as I think that's honestly fine. Uh, shot frequency as well, I think makes sense on medium. So first things first, guys, before we get to the expansion draft and decide who we're going to protect, I'll give you a look at the Canucks roster. As I already mentioned, we have a good young core with some other nice pieces as well. Peterson, for sure, we're going to have to build around him. Best player by far. Highest potential. Besser and Hughes are nice. Horvat there. JT Miller as well. Still not that old 27. Edler, definitely getting up there. I'm honestly not sure still yet uh, kind of what I want to do in terms of rebuild or trying to go for it. I feel like this team needs a little bit more work, so... I'm probably thinking rebuild the first few years. I don't know about the 2021 draft, but 2022 is Shane Wright, 2023 with Connor Bedard. That would obviously help us out a lot. Demko, though, is a solid young goalie. I feel like as long as he plays well these next few years, he can be our starter of the future because goalies are good until they're like 35. So 10-year uh, franchise sim, that'll be more than good for us. Um, in the system, I'm trying to think who else we have. But Colson, of course, you guys told me to change him power forward. I agreed with that. Um, you guys will notice, like I said, a lot of the player type changes. I think as well, Peterson, I made a playmaker opposed to two-way, although he's a good two-way player, but I think he can be a playmaker as well. Um, so we've got some guys of potential here. Cole Lind, uh, Rathbone I boosted a bit, Jet Wu there. So uh, should be interesting. Michael DiPietro as well, uh, good young goalie in case DiPietro doesn't work out for us. But uh, we'll get to the expansion draft here. Honestly, I'm not sure uh, who the Canucks are going to protect. So uh, go to protection list screen. Definitely not going to let the computer do it. I've seen computer protect some weird players. Edler has a no-move clause. Honestly, that's fine. He's one of our best three defensemen anyways. We're definitely going 7-3. and three. Uh, Myers, I dropped to an 82. We'd love for the expansion team to take him in his big contract. Even Nate Schmidt, 28 years old. 
making just under six million for the next six years. He's 83 overall. I kind of want to leave him available because that just sheds a bunch of cap space for us. Obviously, if you guys know anything about the Canucks, Jim Benning really hasn't done the best job working the cap. He's got a lot of big contracts on average players, some even below average. So I don't know, I guess Bowie we protect. Like I honestly don't know. Breeze Ball has like nothing. So I guess Hamannick, just because he might be able to, you know, be traded at the deadline. In terms of goalies, definitely Demko over Holpe. And then in terms of forwards, uh, so Peterson, I think, is auto-protected. So Besser, Horvat, Miller, uh, Pearson, Flurlin's contract's not great. Same with Beagle, Sutter. Like, look at those. So bad. Um, do we protect? I guess we go VC. So many guys here, like, just don't even have our luck. Uh, Vertanen, I guess. Um, like I said, there's so many. Oh, wait. Cole Lynn needs to be protected. Whoops. I did not realize that. So how luck there. We're not going to protect. Cole Lind definitely needs it. Um, so yeah, I think that's our list there. Again, I'm hoping they take somebody from us with a big bloated contract, but let's find out. And look at this. In like the made up draft lottery, it's basically like the 2020.5 draft lottery. Unfortunately, there's no way around it. Uh, with the expansion draft happening when it does in game, Detroit does get the first pick. Minnesota there jumps from 9 to 2. Ottawa 3. Of course, they still have the other San Jose pick. So, uh, sim to the expansion draft here. Tyler Mott was taken from us by the Seattle Kraken. That's not too bad. I'll definitely have to t uh, check out Seattle's team now because I'm curious to see who they picked. I know there's some pretty good players available. Seattle Kraken here. They got Tyson Berry from the Edmonton Oilers. How did they get Tyson Berry? That makes no sense. Shouldn't Edmonton have protected like him, Nurse, I guess Bear? Maybe they protected Larson over Barry. That's a weird one. Backlund, Coleman, uh, Gustafson there, Scott Lauding, Craig Smith, Vatten and Broussard. I guess there's a lot of guys. Like uh, in real life, Coleman's a penny new UFA. Same with Barry. So uh, they don't even have to stay with Seattle. But I mean, even in this game, they can just stay there for a year. Hiddle did not get protected by the Rangers. That's very interesting. Kempney, Mayfield, Jake Bean, Brennan Gooley. Okay, so they actually got some players here. Uh, they didn't really take on any bad contracts. Curious about the goalies. Jack Campbell from the Leafs. They protected Anderson over him. Jonathan Quick. Surprised they took Quick because he's making a lot of money. Uh, wow. So honestly, I don't think Seattle did too bad a job here. Also, guys, in case you were wondering, in the system, they got Nick Merkley, Giovanni Smith they took from the Red Wings. But other than that, just really nobody. And so we're at the 2020.5 draft here, guys. The top four players, all medium elite. Not even a fifth medium elite. Or maybe there is one. Uh, but he's just kind of a diamond in the rough. Going to go later. Honestly, I'm not really sure what to do here. Like, I thought about just auto-simming the whole thing. Like, maybe that'd be more fair. But I'd kind of like to know who we get from this draft. So I'm definitely not going to be making any trades or anything here. I think I'm just going to make the picks, see what happens. This goalie here, Derek Cross from Norway, 50-50, medium elite. I'm going to take him. Fringe starter. That's fine. I'm pretty sure, like, this draft is usually not that good, which is a good thing because, obviously, it never really was supposed to happen. So... I feel like you could honestly just have the expansion draft and not have the entry draft. Like, I don't really think it's needed. Uh, Cole Stewart, cool name, but I do not think he's that great. Uh, Nikita Petrov, he's got a sick name. Xavier Bouchard, doesn't he have, like, medium top six defenseman or low top six? Okay, he is 64 overall, though, so he's not that bad. Jamie Meal here, our scout's, like, 25% chance to be medium leaves a grinder. And he's a 50 overall medium bomb six, not the best. Skylar Bell, the last guy, might be a medium elite. And medium seventh, again, like I said, this draft, it definitely doesn't have that great of players in it. Because honestly, it's a lot of players that just kind of got passed over in the last drafts. And then some just not great created players. Christopher McGinn here has a good character and good work ethic. I mean, you need players like that, come on. And he's 50 overall medium bomb six. Yeah, so probably like none of these guys are ever going to make the team. And so we're at the resign phase here, guys. We have 2 million in cap space. The thing is, I believe everyone should already be signed because, yeah, I added the contract here. So, for instance, on Seattle, uh, they took Tyson Berry, who in real life will be a UFA when Seattle drafts. Uh, but in this game, you can see they still have him for one more year. And as you guys can see here, first day of free agency, there is absolutely nobody. Like, this is kind of who would be available in free agency if you started the season in the fall. So, I think, yeah, we're just going to send the season to the fall. I am curious if anyone will grow over the summer because of this. That'd be kind of interesting. So I'm looking at the captaincy here, guys, and I see that Sutter's reigning A. If that's a thing in real life, I kind of feel bad. I'm going to take it off of him. I feel like Peterson has to be a letter. So Horvath's still wearing the C, and then Peterson and Edler, the two Swedes, get the A's. So we're at the start of the season here, guys, and I've got five players on the block, all with bad contracts. Erickson, Myers, Beal, Roussel, and Furlan. Sutter can be here too, but he's only got one year left, so it's not a big deal. 
I'm definitely going to try and trade some of these. Barchi as well could be on the block. Uh, it's kind of crazy, honestly, just how many bad contracts the Canucks have. Now, luckily, most of them aren't too long. The ones that are long, they're like okay players, so I feel like we could move. So that's what I'm going to try to do first here before we get started. Also, guys, in case you're wondering if you do your own franchise mode with the expansion draft, as far as I can tell, none of the players grew over the 2020 summer, so that's good to see, as I feel like that kind of would have broken a bit. Also, guys, I'm looking at the trade values here. Pearson, of course, is the highest. Huge just behind him. Then best for Colson, pretty close. Horvat and Miller have a decent amount. Hoglander, Edler, Ulevi, kind of what you'd expect. In terms of goalies, I don't think... Yeah, Demko's is, like, decent, but honestly, probably should be higher. Unfortunately, goalies in this game have no trade value. First round pick, tons of value. We have a second there, no fourth, but we have two fifths, two sixths, so hopefully can uh, make some things happen here. All right, guys, so the first round I'm trying to make is with the Florida Panthers. I know Canucks and Panthers make a lot of trades with each other. Myers here, you can see, is 82 overall, and he's making $6 million for the next four years. Strawman is 81 overall, and he's only making 5.5 for the next two. Again, if we do plan on rebuilding the first few years, Strawman's contract will be up by the time we're good, so I think this makes a lot of sense. The value's actually on our side. They don't want Strawman. Maybe they'll do it. Trades accepted. Okay, so I think we definitely lost a bit of talent there. Myers is younger, but of course, shed salary in the future. I thought this was kind of funny, guys. As I'm going through the teams, trying to find a trade partner for one of our bad contracts, I see the Sharks have all four of their big, long contracts on the block. Carlson, Vlasic, Burns, and Kane. Obviously, we just do that Sharks franchise mode. We know exactly what they're going through, trying to deal with that. Just got an interesting offer for the Blue Jackets here, guys. They want to give us the Lightning's third round pick and a seventh for our fourth and seal-offs who's a low starter. Low starter is like a dime a dozen in terms of a goalie, so we move up a round, plus get a seventh. I feel like that's a good trade. And Nashville is now offering us Mikel Granlin and a third for a second and a fifth. So we drop by a round, and we get Granlin, who, honestly, if he has a good season, I feel like we could flip for more than a second. And we're not even really losing the second, we're just dropping one round. We're also dropping a year from 2021 to 2022. You know what, I'm gonna say no to this trade just because I've already edited our lines and I know that Granlin will only be playing third line center for us. And that's because, as I want to show you guys, first line is set, Miller, Peterson, Besser getting a plus one. And the second line, Hoglander, Horvat, Pearson get a plus three. So, unless Granlin could fill in for Pearson, we get a plus three or better, it's just not worth it. Roussel, Beagle, Furling get a plus one. Vertanen, Sutter, and VC get a plus three. So, really good chemistry here. Defensively, Edler and Hughes get a plus three, so I think Hughes is going to play great. Hammonick, Schmidt on the second pair, your Lady Strowman on the bottom. In terms of goaltending, Demko, of course, starting. Holtby backing him up. Special teams here. First power play, I think, is really solid. Just Miller, Horvat, Peterson, Hughes, and Best. So, the second unit there isn't too bad either. Four man's okay. Same with the penalty kill. We actually do get plus three, though, on the first one. Three man, two zeros, so of course, better than negatives. AHL, we got Picolzin, Boyd, and Lynn on the first line. So, really hoping Lynn and Picolzin can have good seasons. Erickson's down there. Uh, same with Barchi somewhere. Uh, really tough, honestly, to get the chemistry good for these four groups. I had to take a minus one. Rathbone, we'll see how he plays, of course. Uh, he's the kid from Harvard. Goaltending wise, D. Pietro there, our starter. 2177 medium starter. Looks pretty good to me. I think I forgot to show you guys as well, but it actually had us listed as a conservative buyer. I don't know about that. Like I said, I think we're more like a conservative seller. Next year, I'll show you guys our overalls to start this season. We have 87 offense, 89 defense, 86 goaltending. So not too bad. You can see Peterson rocking his new A. And speaking of Peterson, I'm actually curious right now what him and Hughes are asking for. Because I know if they have good seasons, they're going to ask for a lot. Hughes getting a plus three is going to have a good season. Five million for three years is crazy cheap. He usually ends up getting, I think, seven plus. Peterson... Asking for 8 for 5 years, it's also very, very cheap. I might as well say that I can get him slightly cheaper here, 7.5 for 5, but that's a really good deal. Same with Quinn Hughes here, 5 million. Uh, even at 5 years, it's still 5.25. Like That's crazy cheap for him, especially kind of me knowing how good he's going to get. 8 years, it's only 6. Quinn Hughes usually gets to a 90 plus, so maybe... Let's see if he'll take 5-5 five, five for 8 years. These could both be great contracts and honestly allow us to win that Stanley Cup in the future. And there we go. Quinn Hughes has signed $5.5 million for the next 8 years. Like I said, that's a crazy good contract. Like, that's actually a little bit cheap, I think, for 87. Even one that's an RFA. And the fact we get him long term is even better. Peterson is well accepted. 7.5 for the next 5. Maybe I should have locked him up a bit longer. I wasn't even, you know, thinking that. But yeah, we got the two main pieces locked up long term great contracts. Good start. All right, guys, so I expected us to be a wildcard team this year. Maybe squeak in, maybe just miss. We're actually sick. 24-9-3 gives us 51 points. This is at the end of December here. First place in the Pacific. We're also the best team in the West and second in the NHL, only the Hurricanes. Peterson right now is going off. 56 points in 36 games. 
So playing him with Besser and Miller is between quite well for him. Also, like I mentioned, I feel like that player type, making him a playmaker, probably makes him actually sim a bit more accurately. So, wow, uh, Canucks team surprising me. I'm still not going to be a buyer or anything at the deadline, but I don't think we'll be selling. Oh my god, guys, check out this trade offer from Steve Eisman. I'm not sure what he's thinking. Third round pick, Luke Lendeni and Sam Gagne for Jay Beagle and Michael Furlan. Furlan's an 80, making 3.5 for the next three years, which is an overpay. Beagle's a 79, making 3 million for the next two years. That's also an overpay. Gagne and Glenn Denning are done after this season. So we're basically in a third round pick to give away these two contracts that I would have paid a third round pick to get rid of. Beagle, okay season, 9 goals, 19 assists. He does help our penalty kill get a plus 3. As well, I think he might be part of that fourth line that's getting a plus 3. Furlan here, 9 goals, 10 assists, 52 games. I mean, honestly, even if they're helping out the bottom 6, these are bad contracts. And this summer, we could use that $6.5 million to sign a very good free agent. So I have to say yes here, even though the team's playing well. Those guys are helping out, and I'd love to call up some people now. And look at that, guys. This actually worked out really well. I knew Furlan was on the third line, but so was Beagle. So the plus three fourth line is still intact. Even if we only get a zero on the third line, I think it's fine. I was only getting a plus one before. Obviously, Glenn Denning here, face-off, master 87 face-offs. He'll be in the middle there on that third line. And I'll try Sam Gagne there on the right. It's a minus one. It looks like Gagne is the one who doesn't really fit. So I'll probably send Gagne down, call up maybe Archie. Actually, guys, look at this. Vasily Colson's already an 83. I'm pretty sure he started the season out as a 74, so he's grown 9 overall. 19 goals and 15 assists is solid, but going up by 9 overall already seems a bit much. Now, one thing I'm actually going to do, I'm not going to come up right away, as we've currently played 54 games. If we let the NHL team play, I think, 3 more games, then we can call Picolson up after that, and he'll actually have a chance to win the caller next season, opposed to if we call him up right now. So, something really small there. Uh, maybe I'll try Barchi for now instead of Gagne because obviously we don't really like that minus one. Now even with Barchi, they're still getting minus one, but he is one overall higher than Gagne, so they'll have to do for the next three games. Start playing a few games past, guys. Here's an update look at the NHL lines. As you can see, the third line there is Roussel, Glenn Denny, and Picoles, and still can't believe it was an 83. Now, I was worried about chemistry, and we have nothing to worry about. Third line did lose one. Power play is still the same. I've actually moved Hollander to center on the second unit. Doesn't have great faceoffs, but Picoles in. Too good not to have there, and Hollander's a lot more offensive than, say, Glenn Denning or Sutter. Four-man power play, I think, is the same. And look at the PK. Glenn Denning, Sutter, Hamnick, Schmick at a plus five, so it's even better now. Uh, before, it was a plus three, so that's awesome to see. As well, the three-man with Glenn Denning gets a plus one. So, uh, special team chemistry actually went up, and put Coles in as an upgrade. So, that trade, I don't know what Eisenman was thinking. We get out from two bad contracts. We call it put Coles in as a better player. We get a chemistry boost on our PK. That worked out in every single way. All right, guys, for the trade deadline now, I guess we have to be a conservative buyer because, I mean, last I checked, you know, we were first in the division. I actually skipped ahead a day, so we'll look at that afterwards. Marc-Andre Fleury is available. Again, Demko, I think, is our goalie of the future. Fleury's 90 overall. Demko's actually gone up by one already, though. He's an 86, so I'm fine with him. Jonathan Taves would be very interesting. Our third line center. He's making 10.5 for the next three years. Ryan Ellis. I guess Nashville's in a rebuild. Ryan Suter, Evander Kane, Kudobin, Brodeen. Surprised to see him there. P.K. Subban, Chris Tanev. There's actually got a decent amount of value there. And finally, at the end there, you have Matthew Shane. So, obviously, you don't really want to take on a big contract. You know, we've made some moves to get rid of our bad ones. Why take on new ones? Basically, I'm just going to be looking around the league trying to make a good hockey trade. Also, I don't really want to mess up with any of our chemistry. So, this might be a bit tough. Just going off here, guys, in LA Kings. Look at this. I have fellow in two-thirds for a second and a third. That's about as close as they could get to giving him to me for free. I might have to say yes to this. One year left there, 2.5 million. He'll need an extension. 27 years old, 81 overall, 19 goals, 17 assists. It's not really a bad player at all. I mean, Jonas Brodeen. Okay, so the IFL trade's gone. Second and a fifth here. Now he is extended at. What is his extension? It's a lot of money. 85 overall, good player. Oh wow, his extension's not there. Okay, so because we added a contract year, maybe it does away with his extension. I mean, he's going to free agency. Jonas Protein's only 27. I feel like the yeah, IFL trade was a little bit better, though. I'm going to say no to this, and let's see if we can actually, you know, go get him for free. All right, guys, so I'm offering LA. I think what they offered me, our second and third round pick this year for IFL, they're two-thirds next year. I actually wouldn't mind keeping our third for next year instead of this one. That, that way we could potentially use it in an offer sheet. So let's see what the Kings say here. Trade's rejected. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what they offered us, but whatever. You know what, guys? I'm actually going to try a trade with Vegas here, offering them, hoping a second round pick for Flurry. The team's playing well. If we could bring in Flurry, 
Maybe a bit of a Cinderella story here, a team we didn't think would even be close and winning the Stanley Cup in the first season. Trades rejected. Okay, it says we're quite far off. That's kind of what I was comfortable giving up. Maybe one other like lower end prospect with the second, and that'd be about it. All right, guys, so since we're actually at the max contracts, instead of a player, I'm just going to add a fourth rounder here in 2023. Let's see what the Vegas Golden Knights say. Trades accepted. Oh, wow. I did not expect that. Okay. So we actually technically just got the best player on the trade block in Marc-Andre Fleury. Wow, I did not expect that. Taze, Ellis, Suter, Kane got traded. I didn't see where. Of course, we'll check at the end. Suman off the market. Duchesne got traded as well. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so I think that's a hockey trade. We added like $2 million in salary cap, but our goalie is now Fleury and Demko. That's sick. Also, guys, in case you were wondering, another reason why I did that, even though Demko went up in rating, his stats aren't the greatest, 0.888 save percentage, 3.46 goals against. Compare that to Flurry, who isn't much better, but still, I feel like with a 90 overall, should give us a better chance to win. And next, you guys are trying to see if we can trade Madison Bowery, the Buffalo Sabres, for a fifth round pick. He's pretty much done growing, 25 years old, only a 78. That fifth rounder could be anything. Trade accepted, okay, so we made that five minutes to go. Uh, we'll take a look, of course, and see all these trades that went down. Very curious to see. Uh, what happened with you know some of the bigger names there? I think Evander Kane got traded, Matthew Shane. So our trade was the last one of the day. New York got Ryan Suter. Wow, only had to give up a prospect in the third. Obviously, big contract. Derek Broussard there goes back to Florida. Saron Noel goes to Seattle. I think they did quite well in that trade. Calgary traded Chris Tanev and Mike Stone to the Washington Capitals. They got back Connor McMichael, Lucas Johansson, and Phoenix Copley. What a return there for a couple defensemen by Calgary. Seattle there traded Scott Lawton to Arizona, got a second and a fourth, and a prospect. So Seattle's making some nice moves. The Rangers also got Jonas Brodeen in exchange for a second and third Hunter Skinner. So Rangers add Suter and Brodeen, two Minnesota defensemen. Their D's going to be a lot better. Um, Athens CU there goes to Vegas. Let's see. Uh, of course, our trade from our country, Flurry. Ottawa there got a second in exchange for a second in Nisimov. That's a weird one. Um, Anaheim got Ryan Dezingle there. The Sharks got a first round pick and Juleson from the Florida Panthers for Evander Kane. I think that's a pretty good return. Obviously, he's got a big contract. Blake Coleman there goes to the Ducks. Seattle gets a third, Gleason and a fifth. So again, Seattle definitely moving some of those extra players they got from the draft. Nashville, a couple second rounders for Duchesne. I mean, no, they also had to go a third and a fourth. He does have a big, long contract. I would have tried to wait until he has a good season to trade him. The Devils there got a second, Brandon Tandem and a fifth for Ryan Murray. Okay. Kenneth Strohs of the Hurricanes, Jeremy Lozon, and Zach Seneshin of the Chicago Blackhawks. Boston gets Sammy Vatanen, who they of course got from Dallas along with Callum DeHaan. Buffalo got Bode Wild from the Islanders for Jake McCabe. Okay, so honestly a pretty active trade deadline, pretty crazy of course. We actually have the best player. TBR is available, 80 overall, one year left to center K. I mean, I'll take him for free, why not? Now I forgot to show you guys before the deadline, we're actually second in the division now, one point behind the Oilers. I think we're actually third in the West then. The Winnipeg Jets have 80, Panthers 87, Hurricanes 91, Capitals 87, best teams in the league. Peterson has 80 points, 62 games, so he continues to tear it up. All right, guys, regular season is now over. We finished the record of 49, 27, and 6, so one shy of 50 wins, which kind of sucks, but what are you going to do? Peterson there finishes with 99 points, one shy of 100. Are you kidding me? Uh, second division behind the Oilers had 104 points in total, which is really good. Sharks and Flames there in Pacific are joining us in the playoffs. Panthers 108, Hurricanes 122, wow. Uh, so they seemed like crazy after boosting a few of their defense from there, Hamilton, Slavin, and Pesci, but it was deserved. So we'll see how everyone else did. Besser 86 over a point per game, JT Miller 79, Horvat 68, Hugh 65, Pearson there had pretty solid season 53. I wonder if he jumps up to like 82. Hollander 52, he's now an 80. He started at a 79. I mean, a 52 point season, he's got to end up being like 82, 83. Even started there, didn't do too bad. Might bring him back, honestly, just because he helps us so much with the chemistry, especially the PK. Same goes for Glenn Denning. The rest of these guys here, again, aren't playing that bad. Uh, Roussel, I don't really think, helped anywhere. So I might be able to move on from him, try and bring in somebody in free agency. But Cole's in there, 24 games played. So one shy, I think, of not being eligible for the Calder next season. Had 15 points with 10 goals, so pretty good year from him. Let's see, Flurry here. 34 and 30, 0.913, 2.69. Holt Demko there, 0.889 and 3.39. Now, how did Flurry do in our games? 11 and 4, the 0.913 and 2.69. Oh, well, that's right. It actually just shows uh, the stats from our games with the total wins, which is, of course, still really weird to me. Uh, now, AHL, Howard Luck, 67 points. Okay. Boyd, 61. Cole Lynn, the one I'm most curious about, 41 and 82. I think he did go up by one, but. 
nothing too crazy. D Pietro there, 0.915 to 2.27, now 79. That looks good. Uh, he'll probably be another year in the AHL though, since we have Flurry's contract for one more year. Uh, we can see kind of what happens there with him and Demko. Now I'm very curious to see, I know at the deadline I saw McDavid was going off. And there you go, 117 points, 82 games, less than 1.5 points per game. And I think this year he averaged 1.88. So even at 97 overall, McDavid's still not doing honestly as good as he probably should be. Dry saw 109 right behind him, so that is pretty realistic. Panarin 105, he was tearing it up, of course, before he had like that leave of absence. Ovi 104 with 59 goals. Eichel, Aho, Shifley, Kane. Peterson actually on the top page is pretty cool to see. Ovechkin did win the Marisha Shard there at 59 goals. And if you guys look at defensive scoring, as you can see, McCart 89 points in 82 games, which is actually pretty accurate. He averaged a point per game as a defenseman this year, the highest amongst defensemen. So I feel like all the, you know, raw writing we did definitely helped. Adam Fox is up there with Hamilton and Carlson. Uh, really like it what I'm seeing here. Take a look at rookie skaters next. Capper's off, 65 points. Surprised he didn't actually score more in 82 games. Cousins had a pretty big year, 52. Same with Hoglander, actually tied with Lafreniere. Three-way tie there for second. So again, a big year for Hoglander. Hopefully he's got a lot of growth over the summer. And as I mentioned, guys, we finished second there in the Pacific Division. Entire league, we're fifth with 104 points. Seven teams there at 100 plus. Anyone gets screwed. Blue Jackets 14th and they missed. Flames squeak. Chicago squeaks in at 19. Let's see. Vegas finished 26th. That's a surprise. I boosted Stone, Theodore, I think somebody else. Flurry. Even though they traded us Flurry, I'm surprised they didn't finish higher. Red Wings there, 62. That is tough to see. And this is kind of cool, guys. In the first round of the playoffs, we're up against the San Jose Sharks, who, of course, I was the GM of in our last franchise series. So we'll take a look here and see what that team is looking like. We know they traded Evander Kane. Patty Marles on the first line with Couture and LeBanc. Meyer Hurdle. Bobby Brink they got from Philly. Wow, I don't remember what that trade was. Donato Gambrel, Nieto, Balsers, Letninov, and Leonard. Defensively, Vlasic, Carlson, Juleson, Simek, Ferraro, Paterin. Oh, wow. So they must have traded Burns the Philadelphia Flyers to get Bobby Brink. And Bobby Brink gets really good. That was the trade they made. Interesting. Okay, so they still make the playoffs even without Brent Burns. Let's see how we do here. Again, I'm just surprised we're in the playoffs and had such a good season. So uh, really, no matter what happens, I'll be fine with it. First two games are at home. 3-1 win, a 4-2 win. I just realized it's like the battle of the, uh, I don't know, sea animals. And wow, 3-2 OT win and a 3-2 OT win. We sweep the Sharks in the first round. Moving on, who are we going to play? Looks like maybe Chicago Edmonton and the so Chicago Blackhawks who actually upset the Oilers. I believe I just said how Chicago got into the playoffs as the 19th seed, kind of like Montreal this year. Chicago won the division. Hollander five points in four games. So, wow, he's awesome. I'm really happy with how he's playing. Let's take a look at the Blackhawks here. So, Jonathan Tate's still on the team, even though he was on the trade block all season. Jabrinkit, Strom, and Kane there on the first line. Peary with uh, Kublik and Taze. Okay, Godet, of course, was on our team. Doc's on the third line right wing. Sanchez, Carpenter, Alex Nylander. So Nylander there, you can see low elite. Doc had made a medium elite. Defensively, Keith, Boquist, Murphy, Zadorov, Lozon, Stillman. Nothing crazy. Lankinen's at 83. I'm guessing, you know, Kane and Taze. Maybe Strum and Debrinkat as well. Just kind of helped carry them over the Oilers. So we do have home ice advantage. Let's see what happens. First two games, 6-3 win, 5-4 win. Wow. Um, 3 nothing loss, 2-1 win. We just have to win one of the next three games. Come on, Flurry. Let's go. 5-1 win. He only lets in one. Great play from Flurry, I'm sure. I'm looking like we really aren't letting in very many goals. And we're now playing the Calgary Flames. A lot of people called the Calgary Canucks after last offseason. Of course, they added Markstrom, they added Tanev. Quinn Hughes there, 11 points in 9 games. Leading our team in playoff scoring. Let's take a look at the Flames roster. So, Goudreau, Lindholm, Kachuk's the top line. Dubay, Monaghan, Mangia, Pani. Okay, the bottom six is rough. Defensively, Jordan Anderson, Valimaki, Hannafin, Shillington, Nestrov. That's right, they traded Tanev. Goal Tanning, they just love Markstrom, and then Copley's backing him up. I think they got him back in the Tanev trade with Conor McMichael and Lucas Johansson. That was a huge trade. So the fact that they still made the conference final and got a bunch of nice pieces, I mean, looks good for them. Uh, now that we are in the conference final, I'm going to start swimming period by period. Right in one so far in the playoffs, they're in five. Tampa Boston there in the East final. I think that's pretty realistic. So here we go. Down one nothing, Anderson for them. 2-1, Hogner for us, Goudreau for them. 3-1, Goudreau again. Give us our second loss of the playoffs, that's all right. Have to win four of the next six, we can do it. We have the home ice here. Hopefully can at least win one of these games in Vancouver. Second game here, guys, we're down two. Ryan Lindholm for the Flames. Horvat, let's go. Peterson, overtime. Are you kidding me? Goudreau again scores for them. I think that's three and two games for Goudreau. So, 
That's tough. Down 2 nothing to the Flames, who I feel like we really should be beating, but you never know. Maybe we can uh, answer back with 2 in Calgary. Game 3, 1-1. One, one. Uh, Roussel gets one handed from for them. 3-1, to one, Strahl and Pearson. 5-1, to one, let's go. Pearson again and Besser. That was a big game, of course. We go down 3 nothing. Only four teams ever come back from that in the simulation. I think it happens a lot more than real life, but still not a place you want to be. So come on, we got the momentum now. Let's go back to back 2 nothing. Miller put Coles in, 2-1, Anderson for them, and we hold on there, 2-1 win. Flames actually had 39 shots there, and Fleury shut the door, only allowing one goal. Heading back to Vancouver, I feel like on a two-game win streak, we've got to win at least one game at home, no matter what, if we want to win the series. And let's go, 4 nothing. VC, Pearson, Horvat, Peterson, 5-4, what the heck. Um, okay, Flames get 4 there on 13 shots, that's not good. We still have the lead with Besser's goal. And we hold on, 7-5, to five. what a game. Glendening, Hughes, and Nesterov. Uh, Markstrom actually got ran out of the net. Copley was in there, we scored a couple in the third on him. So now have a 3-2 lead after winning three straight. Boston looked to be up on Tampa 3-2. Could we have a 2011 rematch? I think I actually mentioned that at the beginning of the video. 3-1, to one. oh no, I might have spoke too soon. Simon Giordano, Nesterov, Horvat for us. Let's go, Pearson, Besser, tie it up. And 4-3, to three, Levo. Another former Canuck gets the game winner. So force of the game seven here. Do or die at home. Can we get back in the Stanley Cup final? 0-0 zero, zero after one. Four nothing, huge second period. Vertanen, Horvat, Sutter put Coles in. And we hold on there, five to two. Vertanen again, the Chuck and Mangiapane for the Flames. Canucks heading the Stanley Cup final in the first year. I wasn't expecting this. Didn't really make any major moves at all. And the Boston Bruins, let's go. 2011 Stanley Cup Final rematch, literally a decade later. This is going down in 2021. We're 12 and four, they're 12 and six. I'm trying to think like who's left from the Canucks, who's left from the Bruins um, from those two teams. Pearson there's got 19 goals in 16 games. I think for us, honestly, it's only Alex Edler. And I think that's it. Like maybe I'm missing an old, I don't think I am. I think it's just Alex Edler. Um, in terms of Boston, Marchand and Bergeron, of course, Pasternak wasn't even on that 2011 team. He didn't get drafted till 2014. Kasha, Krejci was there, Hull's new. Uh, Richie was not, same with Corrali, McGinn, Wagner, Coyle, Depress, all new guys. Uh, Greslick wasn't there, same with McAvoy, Carl, Vatnin, Riley, Miller. Uh, yeah, so I think it's just Bergeron, Rask, of course, uh, Marchand and Krejci, and then Edler for us. So uh, pretty much all new teams, but I think the rivalry is still there. Decade later, can the Canucks get that redemption for the whole city of Vancouver? Let's go. We have the home ice advantage here. First game, up 2-1. Horvat, Besser, Bergeron, of course, scores. 4-3 now. Bergeron again, McGinn, Richie, Vertanen for us. 6-6. Six six. Bergeron, is that four goals for Bergeron? He hates Vancouver. He was a part of the last one. He's got four goals in this first game. Horvat, Edler, and Vertanen, though, help us tie this up. And are you kidding me? What the heck? What? A five goal game in game number one of the Stanley Cup final. Come on, <laughs> what is going on here? I feel like the fix is in. All right, game two, we got to answer back. One nothing from Horvat, two nothing, put Coles in, and we hold on there. Flurry with the big shutout. So here you go, series is tied up, one apiece. We're heading to Boston now. I still can't believe Bergeron's five goal game. Peterson with a couple, and you got uh, Richie there with one. And we hold on 4-2 to for Tannen. Peterson completes the hat trick. Let's go. I mean, if their star player is going to go off, we need our star players to contribute as well. Game number four here. We have the 2-1 series lead. 2-1 to one in this game. Vertanen, Besser, Marchand for them. 2-2. Two, two. McGinn gets one. I think they signed him out of free agency. And they get the game winner from DeBrusque. 3-2. to two. Series is tied 2-2. Two, two. I believe in 2011 was 2-2. Two, two, but both teams won their home games. Where in this one, uh, we've actually taken one home and one away. Game five. 0-0. Zero, zero. 0-0, zero, zero. come on, 1-1, one, one. McGinn and Edler, come on, Bucci overtime winner, are you kidding me, Kevin Miller of all people, what a joke, alright, so we're down 3-2, the thing is, Boston was down 3-2 in 2011, came back 1-2 straight, maybe we can do it too, game 6, do or die, down 2-1, Pasternak with a couple, but Colson gets one, that's not good, 4-1 for them, resume simulation here, killed off the power play, they're out shooting us by quite a bit. We really need to rally here. Come on, please. <laughs> Three goals. I mean, Boston did it to the least. Can we do it to Boston? I think we're running out of time there. Okay, well, 
Hopefully the Canucks fan base doesn't ride on this one. I feel like that's still a pretty good showing, making the Stanley Cup final, tied up to a piece, unfortunately just scored two goals in the last two games. I mean, you're not going to win. Boston Bruins respect, win the Stanley Cup. Honestly, though, really good sign of things to come. Quinn Hughes, 25 points in 22 games, 24 assists. That's ridiculous. He definitely would have asked for more than five and a half million uh, for eight years, whatever ridiculous contract we got him to. I still can't believe that. Same for Peterson. He had 23 and 22. Horvat, Besser, Miller, Hoggender there. He's got to get a big jump. How did Fleury play in the playoffs? 0.923 to 2.5. Yeah, he looked really, really good. So I think the future is bright. Uh, we'll take a look here and see who Boston went through. Beat Canes in six, who of course won the President's Trophy. Flyers in five, then the Lightning in seven. So uh, they definitely earned it there, beating some good teams. And check this out, guys. A lot of results are in. Detroit picking first overall. I wish that was the case in your life. LA second, Devils third. Seattle there picking eight. So even though there was like an extra draft, they dropped from, you know, a top three pick to the eighth pick. Buffalo there 14, so they do a little bit better than real life. I'm like, glad to see too, you know, the traded picks for lottery picks. Kind of always sucks when that happens. I need to take a look at the awards as well. Don't want to forget to do that. So Bruins, of course, Stanley Cup, Canes, Presidents. We got the Clarence Campbell. Bruins got the Prince of Wales. Individual there, McDavid, Art Ross, and the Hart. Dougie Hamilton, James Norris, Panarin, Lady Bing, Kaprizov, Calder, Marchand, Conn Smythe. And Lodrovic there got the Vesna. Interesting. Mrazek, though, William Jennings, of course, you know, they share it. Jarmel Sin with the Bill Masterton. Sharks coach Jack Adams. Bergeron Selkie. McDavid also got the Ted Lindsay. And then, of course, Ovechkin there with the Maurice Richard. Now, in regards to the AHL, I actually wasn't really paying attention to how our team did. And as it turns out, we actually won the North Division. That's pretty cool to see. Unfortunately, though, we didn't have a great playoff run. Individual awards there. Who Don most points. Uh, David Carr MVP. Boldy most goals. He seems to always get it. Biega, best defenseman. Aiden Hill, best goalie. Vanacek there, MVP of the playoffs. Um, let's see. Oscar Dansk, lowest goals against. Okay, so none of our players. We'll get to the draft now, guys. I think we'll also take a quick look at retired players. Marion Hosa there calls it a career, which makes sense. Same with Zetterberg, Gabrick. Dano Char calls it a career as well. Uh, Ryan Kessler, Derek Roy, a lot of retired guys. Franz Nielsen, I wouldn't mind if he retires in real life. As long as it helps our cap situation, which I think it would. In terms of goalies, really no one. And kind of random, guys, but I was just looking at our coaching staff. And our head coach here, overall A-, minus, but he's got A-plus teaching and A-plus coach influence. So that is so good for a young team, especially, too, with us having such a good season. It's going to make our head coach even better. So we're really looking forward, honestly, to how we play. Uh, if you guys don't know, in my franchises, I always keep the head coach for all 10 seasons as it's kind of the only way to have, like, a record book of your kind of progress throughout the franchise. It'll tell you how many Stanley Cups you won, presidents, trophies, as well as your overall record over those 10 seasons. Now, getting into the draft here, guys, of course, we'll be picking 30th, so probably not going to be getting an elite player, but um, you never know. Mason Hewitt there's made up, going over Owen Power. I kind of hate that. Another made up player, Veneers, Eklund, Hughes. Um, there's probably some other made up guys somewhere later. Um, Wallstedt there. Okay, so I mean, the draft actually looks pretty realistic in terms of where everyone's supposed to go. And it looks like there's actually only a couple made up guys, which I like to see. Look at this guy. So there was a two made up medium lead guys at the top of the draft. Korolev here, pretty much guaranteed medium lead. We could take him with our first round pick. And then behind him, Hillen here, 50-50 medium lead, but he's a gem. So I think these two are created players and they're both going to be medium elites. I feel like we got to get involved with these two players. Also guys, this goalie here, Joey Hobson, should be medium elite. We can probably get him in like fourth round. All right, guys, the next year I'm trying to offer the Boston Bruins, Yermo here, 19-year-old, uh, 65 overall, medium top four potential, third, fifth, and sixth for their first rounder. And they say yes. I was a little rushed there because I see 10 seconds left on the clock uh, before Detroit makes their pick. And let's see, first overall, that Hewitt guy, 79 overall, medium elite. So, yeah, he is high rated than Owen Power. It just kind of sucks um, that, you know, there are creative players in the first year draft. I wish there weren't, but what are you going to do? Um, so pick number 31 is our first pick. I'm going to go back to back here with the gem as well as Korolev. I guess we'll take the gem first, because he is a gem. And he's medium top 6, 65, okay. Well, we got two chances. Hopefully Korolev's a medium elite. If not, I mean, I guess we just lost two third rounders, but we took a chance trying to get a medium elite. And it didn't pay off, we got a 64 medium top 6, but uh, still not too bad. Also guys, if you're curious how the first round of the draft went down, I feel like it was pretty realistic. You have to ignore the creative players, obviously. So power went first. Veneers second, Eklund third, then you got Johnson fourth there, Hughes fifth, Ratu sixth, uh, Lysel seventh actually, Lucius eighth, then you got Clark, so I'm surprised, you know, the high top six on before him, Zachary Laharu, McTavish, Gunther falls to 14, Lambos at 15 there, Walsh at 17 of the Blackhawks, I think I had the Blackhawks uh, actually taking him in my mock, Evanson at 20 is a really good pick for the Flyers, 
Uh, I'm looking at it here, I think actually, like I said, pretty realistic. Now our next pick here, guys, isn't until the third round. Uh, we'll see who's available. It's Joey Hobson, dude. Ranked number 117. Should be a medium elite goalie. I'm willing to take a chance on him. And he is a medium elite goalie. Only 55 overall, but I feel like that's definitely, you know, worth more than a third round pick. Um, our next pick here is in the fifth. Honestly, I might take another goalie here. Voinov, 50-50, medium elite. Uh, medium French, okay. Probably the last goalie I'd take. This Artukin defenseman, 50-50, medium elite. Medium seventh. What are you going to do? Now, with our sixth round pick, there's this Bobrovsky guy. Should be low top six, which... Kind of a safe pick. He's a low 7th, but he is 60 overall, uh, which is pretty high rated out of the draft. Parat here might be a medium elite. Grinder, I doubt it, but you never know. 55 medium bomb 6 for the second last pick of the draft. actually not terrible. All right, guys, so we're not the re-sign phase here. As you can see at the bottom, we have just over 17 million in cap space. Peterson's now a 91 overall, making 7.5 million for the next five years. And Quinn Hughes is a 90, making 5.5 for eight years. Like I said, those two contracts are really going to help us build this dynasty. Best players up to an 88, Horvat 87, Miller 87. I think those three all went up by one. So Hughes went up by three, Pearson by two. But Cole's 86 is ridiculous, plus 12 overall. He didn't even have that great of a season. 37 points, 58 AHL games, 15 points, 24 NHL games. Like, it's decent, but I don't think it's NHL decent. Tanner Pearson's up to an 84. Wow, that's surprising. Uh, he should have his extension, but I think because we added the contract here, we don't get the NHL extensions, which I didn't know, but I mean, whatever. In real life, they offered him $3 million, and in the game here, he wants five. And in real life, everyone said how oh, the $3 million extension was terrible. Uh, Edler, I wouldn't mind bringing back for cheap, 35 years old. Um, maybe one year, $4 million. 84 overall, $4 million defenseman is actually like, not too bad. And we know we can play him on the top pair with Hughes and get plus three. Schmidt also gets a plus three on the top pair, but um, just kind of giving us options. Let's see, oh, your lady there is an 81. How much does he want? Three million for two. One year, two million. Let's try two years at two and a half million. I'm not really sure, honestly, how your lady grows. Uh, he's one of those guys I kind of forget. Hamannick does not want to come back, and he would have wanted 3.5 for three. So like I said, Edler in 84 for four million bucks. We get him, is very good contract. TBR wants 2.3. So yeah, probably letting those guys go. Sutter I'd like to keep. Uh, he really helps out in terms of the chemistry. 3.2 million though for an 80 is a lot of money. Sven Barchi we can definitely let go. Uh, Jimmy VC was actually part of that fourth line getting plus three. Wants 1.9 for two years. I don't know if I can do that. Louis Erickson making six million bucks. If we buy him out, it'll cost us two million this year. So we save four, two million the next year. Um, I'm trying to think if we need the money. I mean, I guess we'll kind of know later on. Definitely a buyout candidate. Cole Lynn for sure making an offer on. I'd like to get him signed longer, uh, three years, three million bucks, a lot better than one year for 900k. Luke Lentang, 78 overall, should want 750k, he wants 1.8 million, it's like he knows that we get plus three on the fourth line with him, uh, as well we get plus five on the PK. One thing I'm actually curious about the goalies, so Fleury's got one more year at 6.8, he's down to 87, Demko needs a new contract, and he wants four million for two, that's so reasonable. Um, I'm just gonna, I mean, okay, let's do like 3.75 for two. Basically, once Flurry's up, he'll get some of Flurry's money. It'll still be good for us. DPH was an 80 overall start in AHL. It's going to be really nice. Uh, this Keeley guy, I'm definitely going to let go. Cross, we drafted in like, the made-up draft. He could be the backup, 62 medium fringe, but there might be better uh, free agent goalies available for the AHL team. All right, guys, so let's think about some of these players. Pearson, 84 overall, wants almost $6 million bucks. I feel like the only reason he went up, though, is because he was getting that plus three, so... Going to pass on him, and then guys like Sutter and VC, who I'd like to bring back for the chemistry reasons, I'm going to pass on for now. Basically, I'm going to gamble the fact that they won't get signed in free agency, at least not right away, and I should be able to get them for cheaper later on. In which case, I think they're a really good addition to the team, but at the current asking price, it doesn't make sense. Now, Travis Hamannick, I'm going to make a one-year offer on at $3.3 million, just because 81 overall, like that's not terrible. Uh, so we'll see what these guys say. Edler wants more money, or he wants a two-year deal. Uh, wow, Hamannick did say yes, that's interesting. Uh, Yalevi also wants more money. Demko came back, that's good. Same with Cole Lynn. So for Edler, we'll try one year, 4.2. And Yalevi will try two years, 2.7. And there we go, Edler signed, same with Yalevi. All right, guys, so after all those signs, we have about 5.5 million in calf space, which means I'm going to buy out Ericsson. We'll save us 4 million this year. Will cost us 2 million next year, but Fleury's off the books. Strawman's off the books. Um, I think some other guys are off the books. So I believe it's worth it. Actually, only gives us about 3 million the way it works out. So 8.5 million still um, gives us a lot more options, I think, in free agency. So let's see who is available here. Taylor Hall did not resign at the Boston Bruins. Landis Scott knocked back the Avalanche. Buchnevich there. 
Is he an RFA? He should be. Yeah, he's an RFA. Solid. Adam Pellick, obviously. I boosted him up to an 87. He wants Payton. Lou Lamorell's not down to do it. Jatar there. Athanasiu. Athanasiu went up to an 85. He wants 7. Jeez. Duclair, Deneau. Cahoon, Perot. I mean, there's like... Jason Spezza wants 6 million bucks. That's all oh, that sucks. So yeah, add his extension, which would have been 750k for the Leafs. But because I added the contract here, it goes away. So they lose out on Spezza, who actually went up in rating, which is kind of surprising. Tanner Pearson, Larson. I feel like there's a lot of bad contracts to be had here. I have fell home. We almost got one and five and a half. So we would have lost him anyways. Uh, wouldn't be able to like fit him under the cap. Granlin, same thing. Okay, so I mean, Taylor Hall, I'd like to have. Um, other than that, I mean, Landis Cog as well. Saw it just doesn't seem worth it. Um, Adam Pellick, that's a lot of money. It's hard to say. He's a defensive defenseman. I'm not really sure how much they matter in this game. Like, I didn't see the Islanders going a deep run or anything. I think Hull and Landis Cog are the two guys we'd like to get. Then maybe Pellick. Goalies to Karask. I mean, we don't need a goalie. We have Flurry and Demko, but more just kind of curious taking a look here. I uh, will check two-way goalies because we could use an AHL backup. Wow, Tyler Parsons, 2376. Is he UFA? Okay, well, it's a great player to have. He'll back up DiPietro, plus he's just a decent young goalie. Look at the rest of the two-way players here. You got Zach Senishin available. I mean, why not make an offer on him? Ryan Kuffner, same thing. Um, I think I have like 15 contract spots, or we have 18 contract spots there. Green, 2371. Uh, Winnipeg probably retains them, but if not, Take a chance. Andrew Peak here, the Blue Jackets, 2376. I mean, he could be like a decent AHL player. I accidentally offered 750 there, posted 950. Jury's 2171. We're just gonna make offers on all these guys. Maverick Bork here is available, 19 years old, 63 overall, medium top nine. He actually slipped through the cracks. He should have been a medium top six since he was a first round pick. Uh, so I'll change him after, I guess, for the next one. Uh, but I'd like to keep him, see how he grows. And I also made offers here on Clark Cooley and Iskakov. I feel like, you know, why not try and get some decent uh, young prospects. And looking at Lanscog and Hall here, Lanscog fits in our top six, Hall fits on the second line, plus penalty kill line, which is interesting. So I'm actually a little shy of Taylor Hall by 400k. I mean, I, I will still make the offer to Hall. Um, it'll be like 8.5 million, seven years until he's 36. Um, I, I guess we have to. So yeah, I'll make the offer to Hall, make the offer to Lanscog. I don't know if we're going to like be in on this. Obviously I'm offering on both because I'm good with either or, but we'll give it a shot. And there we go, Clark accepted his offer. Same with Cooley, uh, Bjork there, Iskakov, that name's always so tough for me to say. Two thirds. Pittsburgh wants Flurry for two thirds. Um, he is only one overall higher than Demko at this point. Like we made that trade, he helped us out in the playoffs, but Demko started out in 85, he's now in 86. He could be in 87 by the start of the season. He's making half as much as Flurry. So this actually isn't that bad of an offer. I'll I'll give them Flurry for a second, because I think that's what we gave up to get him. He goes back to Pittsburgh, everyone's happy. Maybe we can even add a third? Uh probably not the third. Let's flurry for a second, he goes back home. Pittsburgh says yes, and that gives us about seven million dollars in salary cap space. So we could have actually made Landscog and Hall a bit better offers, but I uh, will wait. We'll see what they say. Peak rejected. Uh, yeah, we accidentally gave him 750k, so I can give him a new offer. Senishin accepts, Parsons accepts, good AHL uh, backup goalie, Kuffner, Jack Drury there, Green as of now. Uh, Winnipeg, I'm sure, will match, though. Taylor Hall rejects, goes to, <laughs> he goes back to Arizona. I doubt that, I highly doubt it. Lennis Gog goes to the Flames. I'll look for a team that's more of a playoff contender. I hate when they say that after you make the Stanley Cup final. It's so annoying. Um, I'm sure it's based on like your team overall or whatever. But during the summer, obviously, you're not going to have your roster entirely laid out. It doesn't really make sense uh, for it to be judged that way. We now have 13.5 million in cap space, and we can't get one of the big name free agents because we did not pay them enough. Ah, uh, that's annoying. Anthony DeClaire here, 25 years old, 85 overall. He's still got a couple years left to grow. He wants five years there at 5.5 million. That's not too bad. Uh, he's the only one that's actually still going to grow. Bushnovich, one more year, but he's an RFA. Right, DeClaire's a UFA. This could be a really good contract for us. Um, so he's 35.5. He fills in for Pearson's spot. Pearson wanted around this much money, but he was in 84 and he was done growing. So let's see if we can get Duclair there. Uh, he'd be playing with Horvat and Hoglander. 
So I think, you know, that should work out in terms of chemistry. And yeah, Winnipeg did match our offer to Luke Green, which I kind of expected. See if we can get Duclair. Constellation Pride. He goes with the Coyotes. Too many players at my position. I mean, you literally would have slotted into the second line. I guess Pit Colson might be there now, but come on. This is an interesting one, guys. Anthony Beauvillier is available as an RFA. He's actually dropped in rating to an 82, even though he had 25 goals and 19 assists, which is pretty good. Um, I'm wondering, like, on a one-year... 2.6 million. We could get him for a second round pick, which would be pretty good value. So I'm offering him 2.6 million for one year. We'll have to give the Islanders our second round pick, but more than fine with that. I feel like he can grow a lot on our team. Are you kidding me? The day after we offer Bovier that contract, he signs with the Islanders. So I just got a huge offer here from the Canucks. Logan Couture making 8 million bucks in the next six years. Two fourths and a fifth. They want Wu, they want Rathbone, they want two seconds. They're asking for a lot there for a guy who's making a lot of money uh, until he's 38 years old. Obviously, we have the cast space now to do this, but they're just asking for way too many pieces. So the best free agent still available is Ryan Getzlav. He could be a really solid third-line center for us. I'm going to look at doing one year. He's 85 overall. One year, 5.2 million. Also, guys, I want to try and bring back Jimmy VC just to help us get that plus three fourth line, offering him 1.25 for one year. Way too much for 78, but like I said, it's only for the chemistry boost. Uh, Glenn Denning, I want to do the same thing for. We could actually get him maybe a bit cheaper, 1.15, probably just because he's older than VC. Also, too, guys, I was looking for Brett Sutter in free agency to possibly bring him back, but looks like someone signed him. Are you kidding me? Getzlav appreciates the interest. Decided to go with another team. Simply have not offered me enough money. I guess I should have overpaid him, but I thought, you know, he was in free agency for so long and wouldn't have to. I feel like this is one of the only times where I've had money to spend in free agency and just keep missing. Like, $14.5 million now after we bought out Erickson, trade away Flurry. And every single big free agent we made an offer on said no. Maybe I'm being a bit cheap, but uh, usually you give them around, they're asking. At least some of them say yes. Mark Jankowski here, four teams interested. One year left to grow, 80 overall. I mean, worst case, he's a good AHL player. He wants, like, no money. Uh, we'll do a million bucks straight on for two years, see if we can even get him. And there we go, Glenn Denny did accept his offer. Same with Jimmy VC. So we're reuniting that fourth plus three line. Jankowski, though, said no. With the Capitals, so I don't think we got a single free agent that wasn't on our team before. Next year, guys, I'm actually trying to trade for Dustin Brown. He's got one year left there, making six million bucks. He's up to 85 overall. We need somebody to play on the third line, essentially. He could definitely be a really good third liner for us. Like I said, he's on the block for some reason. They also have Dowdy on the block, so I think they're just you know doing that rebuild, offering Voinov, French star potential goalie, a third, a fifth, Senishin. It's a lot of average stuff, but he didn't have that much value. And trades accepted. Okay, I think we kind of stole Dustin Brown, but name of the game. All right, guys, we're in August now, and I still need a couple players for the third line. I'm going to try grabbing Bobby Ryan here, sniper. He'll play with Dustin Brown, so I'm thinking we just need, like, a playmaking center there. No one else is really good here. They're all 79s. We have no one internally, so I'm going to make, like, a cheap trade, I think. So next year, guys, trying to get Victor Rash from the National Predators. One year left, they're making $4 million. A lot for an 80 overall, for sure. But uh, we need somebody on the third line. It's kind of funny how it works out, you know? Brandon Sutter was asking for about that much, same rating, but we didn't know we were going to miss it on the free agents, so that kind of sucks. Jury, 21-71, low top six, we got for free, seventh rounder. I feel like they should, I feel like they should say yes here. Trades rejected. I really don't want to ice like a 78 overall third line center, we'll try a fifth here. Now they say yes. And Bobby Ryan accepted his offer, guys, I didn't realize he hadn't accepted yet, but that's good to see. Wow, big trade offer here, Ryan Ellison a third from Nashville for Cole Lynn, Rathbone a second, and Keppin. Ryan Ellis is really good, but he's getting older. He's an offensive defenseman. We kind of already have that in Quinn Hughes. I think Lynn and Rathbone could really help us out in the future. So I'm going to say no, but definitely a good offer. Also, guys, I didn't even realize, but after trading Flurry, we need another goalie. So Ellis here, 2075 medium fringe. It's pretty good. Um, I'm willing to give 950k or 925 for three years because I think he'll grow quite a bit. All right, guys, rather so the next season here. As you can see, our team status is buyer, so it's actually gone down, even though I feel like our team is just as good as it was last year, if not better. On the first line, there we have put Colson playing with Peterson and Besser getting a plus one, but Colson's now an 88, which is ridiculous. Like I said, started out last season at 74, so he's gone up by 14. Miller, Horvat, Hollinger get a plus three, so we didn't need Peterson because Miller fills in that role, gives the second line a plus three. Lind, Rask, and Brown get a plus one, so pretty solid third line. Lind actually grew, he kind of took over for Bobby Ryan's spot there. And then VC, Glenn Denning, Vertanen, the fourth line I wanted to bring back, of course, gets that plus three. Uh, defensively, they just moved it around a bit. Schmidt's on the top pair now with Hughes. I figured he's 30 years old, we might have him still for four more years. Why not play with Hughes, try and get his rating up? Edler and Levy here on the second pair, getting a plus one. Levy's down 83. And then we have Hamannick and Rathbone, actually, on the bottom pair. Rathbone's an 80, I figured. 
he made sense to uh, call up to the NHL. Of course, in goal, Demko starting now an 87. So he does have the same rating as Flurry. DiPietro backing up there, 82. Rolls back up, so that's probably for the best. Also, too, in terms of special teams, I haven't finished it yet, but I noticed our PK. We do get a plus five here. Glendening, Lind, Schmidt, and Yulevi. So pretty cool to see, even though we lost Sutter, some other guys, our chemistry there is staying good. And right here, guys, a quick look at the AHL team. You can see we've got Cuffin on the first line with Ryan. Uh, we've got Roussel still there. He's got one year left on his contract. The rest of it, not the greatest. Justin Bailey, 79, is pretty good. He's third, he's third line, though, due to chemistry. Uh, defensively, you can see Chapel on the top here with Strollman, who got sent down. But he's 80 overall, and he's making $5.5 million, so it's going to be tough. Who there paired up with Breezebois, Rafferty, Berglund. In terms of goalies, Parsons, of course, the starter. Ellis backing him up. So... Um, again, doesn't look too bad. We really got screwed in free agency. I think it's the unluckiest I've ever been in, considering the fact we were just in the Stanley Cup final. You guys want to slide with us, but I guess we got to pay them a bit more money. So in terms of the overalls here, offense, defense, and goaltending, we got 92 offense, 91 defense, 87 goaltending. So yeah, we are higher rated than we were last year, but somehow team stats has gone down. Don't know how that works, but that's me, guys, for this first episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you guys are not subscribed yet, hit the sub button. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.